That was a guy right there. Okay, so... Okay, we're losing this? Woo! That was sick! Insurgency Sandstorm, the first person shooter for people who want a realistic shooter in an accessible package. There's no 10 mile hikes in this game in order to get to the combat. It throws you into the hardcore action that will get your adrenaline racing right away. It's also free on Steam right now until the 17th, so if you've never tried this title, you definitely don't want to miss out. I'd also like to give a big thank you to Focus Home Interactive for sponsoring this video. Now, I've been a fan of Insurgency since its Source Engine days back in 2014. The original Insurgency was a breath of fresh air among the formulaic AAA shooters of that time. The realism and believability of the combat was there and accessible for anyone who wanted to test it out. There was no extreme learning curve, all the basic shooter skills translated over perfectly from your favorite games, it was set in maps that felt realistic with guns that felt realistic. Insurgency Sandstorm takes that same formula and brings it over to the Unreal Engine with better lighting, texturing, animations, and more detailed maps. It's even creepy at times, thinking that as you aim down the sights of your rifle, that it may not look that different from what an actual urban firefight could look like. Your favorite modern and time-tested weapons are all here in high resolution, with smoking gun barrels complete with the most common attachments and faction-specific gear. The latest 1.5 patch for the game has added performance improvements, changes to the matchmaking system, added the classic control point mode domination, a player reporting system, and tons more. With performance optimizations, players especially with lower end rigs are reporting considerable frame rate increases. Generally, things have felt more stable for me as well, and I made sure to test it out without turning down all the visual effects. Players can now also manually switch teams if there's a team imbalance, and there is an auto team balancer that will not only notify players of an imbalance allowing them to voluntarily switch sides, but will do it automatically if nobody volunteers. This is great news, and perhaps it was just the game sessions I played in, but for the most part, things felt quite balanced without any heavily one-sided games. There's also mod tools in the work with a currently private alpha that will eventually allow all community members to start changing the game, creating their own maps and more. This is actually really exciting news because especially with smaller dev team games, the community can play a major factor when it comes to advancing the design and development. Also, if you haven't played for a while, they've added three more maps to the game, including an old classic, plus 10 new weapons, tons of new cosmetics, and plenty of other fixes. Now, getting back into the gameplay for myself, I was quickly reminded of the brutal intensity that this game has, the joy of going John Wick on people when room clearing, and also the instantaneous death you will receive when peeking a corner in front of a sniper's scope. No kill cams or kill confirmation here, you have to watch for the body drop or to go investigate it on your own. It's also a game that can benefit pretty heavily from active voice communication for teamwork and uh, community building? To the place I belong. West Virginia. West Virginia. Mama. Mama, take me home. Hey, guy. Bentley. Now, depending on the game mode or map that you're playing, the experience can vary quite a bit. Some of the maps have more of a tight-knit layout where intimate knowledge of that map is going to allow you to move through it rather quickly or more efficiently. And some of the other maps are going to be far more open with many, many different ways to traverse this terrain and many different spots for players to hide. Map knowledge without a question is going to be one of the biggest learning curves for this game. It's really fun just to get into and explore around a bit, but after you've had your fun running around corners getting mowed down instantly, you're going to start to move more tactically, more cautiously, and start to learn those maps and figure out what angles are your major danger points. This is a game about peaking techniques. With a nearly instantaneous time to kill on most weapons, it's really going to be a game about who gets the first shot off. So concealment, 
proper peaking, proper map knowledge is going to be your biggest ally when playing Insurgency. The ambiance and the allure of the realism will suck you into this game. Map knowledge and getting better at navigating each map and your individual tactics will keep you playing it for the long term. I'm impressed with all the improvements the Insurgency developers have made over the past year. There's been a huge amount of quality of life changes, bug fixes, and things like the team balancer being added to the game that are going to make a huge difference in the long run. With the uh, new community tools coming out in the near future, allowing players to create their own maps and potential game modes, it seems like the sky is the limit for the overall potential of Insurgency Sandstorm. I really cannot wait to see what the new community maps and modes are going to be like. With a base game that's now seen a considerable amount of polish and refinement, they've created the perfect canvas for the player base to paint the rest of this picture. I can't wait to see what this game does over the next year. Again, if you guys want to check out this game for yourself, do it now. It is free for all players until the 17th. It's available on Steam. There's a link in the video description for you to check it out. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.